We have a really big event coming up tonight and tomorrow. It's called the Super Moon, and I'm going to show you how you can get a really awesome photo of the moon with having a feature on the Earth as the foreground in the photo. Now, let me show you exactly what I mean by that. If you take a look at this photo here, this is by Jim Ding, and he is in our Photography Academy Facebook group. He took this photo, so this is a really cool little landmark, and the moon is rising right above it. Is it a coincidence? that the moon happens to be lined up above it it's not and you can get this kind of a photo if you do some really good planning and research and I am going to show you exactly how you can do that how you can be in the right place at the right time tonight tomorrow night and the next night so that you can get a shot of the moon rising above your favorite landmark that's near your home here's another example and this photo is from the photographer Jennifer Cordy and she has mastered the art of being able to get shots of the moon over famous landmarks in New York City and she has worked out a real science for doing this and you can see the effectiveness of these photos these are not composites these are just one frame photos and um, there's one thing that is really important to point out that if you look at the color of the sky in this photo it's clearly kind of a, a nighttime shot and the sky is dark but then look at this photo here and this one there is still ambient light in the sky so it's really important that you know how to be in the right place at the right time so that you can get a shot preferably before the sky is pitch black because those types of shots with the moon in it they're really tough to get in one frame so i'll show you how i do this and it's using a free app on desktop called the Photographer's Ephemeris. Now, um, this is a paid app if you're on your phone, but if you're on desktop, it's a free app. So let's take a look at an example first. I'm going to get to the Statue of Liberty in New York, but since I've got the map here, let's take a look at a, an example of Seattle, Washington. Now, there is a park uh, in Seattle, Washington that is called Cary Park, and I've got the pin map right on the Cary Park, right on it on the map. Now let's take a look at what you get from Cary Park. This is my photo that I shot from there. You get the Space Needle front and center. It's an awesome composition. And let's look at the, the larger pano. So you've got Mount Rainier over here on the right. You've got the Space Needle in the middle. And if you were to show up to Cary Park on May the 7th, 2020, you should get the moon rising right about here in the photo. And let me show you how it is that I know that. So the first thing you need to look at is the date in the photographer's ephemeris. It says May 8th. Let's just go back one day, click the left button, and it says Thursday, May 7th. And then we're going to look at this blue line here. And this blue line represents where the moon is going to rise in relation to you if you were standing at Cary Park, which is where the viewpoint is. So what you can see here is, here's on the map where the Space Needle is. So we can see that if you were standing up here at Cary Park, the moon would be rising just to the left of the Space Needle and probably over those downtown buildings. Now that's on Thursday, May the 8th. Now the other thing we really need to notice here is how dark will the sky be when the moon rises? So we, we can know that super easy. Look here um, at the light blue line, that's the moon rise, and we can see that the moon will rise at 9.09 .09 p.m. Then you wanna know, okay, what time is sunset? Well, over here, the orange line, sunset is at 8.30. So we know that 39 minutes after sunset, the moon is going to rise. So we pretty much know that the sky will be mostly dark at that time. But let's look at what happens if you go one day back. What if you go to May the 6th? So back to Photographer's Ephemeris, click the left arrow, and now it's Wednesday, May the 6th. And you can see the times have changed now. Moonrise is at 7.46 p.m. and sunset is like 45 minutes later at 8.30. So the moon is going to rise like in this uh, this shot right here, the moon is going to rise while it's still light out, and that makes for a really cool shot. So um, another interesting thing to know is where the moon rises and how it changes by the day. So this is May 6. Now if I click forward one day, watch that blue line. Here's May 7th, and there's May 8th. So if you waited until May 8th, the moon is going to rise even closer to the uh, Space Needle. Now let's look at the Statue of Liberty. So just type in here, Statue of Liberty, 
and there it is. I'll zoom out just a little bit. And you don't want the pin to be on the Statue of Liberty. You want the pin to be in line with somewhere where you are going to stand. So I'll grab the pin and move it to approximately here. And you can see that the blue line is out of sync with where the Statue of Liberty is. So I need to move it up. It's a bit of a trial and error kind of thing. Move it up even more and just a little bit more. Oh, I went too far, just a little bit back. There we go. And now the we've got we've got it lined up so that we now know if you were to stand anywhere along this line, you are going to be in line so that the moon will rise behind the Statue of Liberty. Now, the next thing that I have to address is your lens. And uh, you want to be using the longest lens that you have in your arsenal for this type of a shot. And the reason for that is because you want the moon to be as big as possible within your frame. So if you have a 500 milliliter, milliliter, millimeter lens, then that's what you're going to want to use. If you have uh, a, a magnifier, like a 1.4 times magnifier that you can put on in between the lens and your camera body, then do that so that you will get the absolute most magnification and zoom power that you have in your entire arsenal. And that way, the moon will be the biggest it can possibly be in the frame. And uh, you will also have that interesting foreground element. Now, I want to talk about your town, your specific situation here. Um, but first, I do have a request from you. Uh, the only way that YouTube knows if this type of a video is valuable content is if you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. So I would really appreciate if you would do both. Please subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button on this video. So now let's talk about you. In your town, your city where you live, there will be some kind of an iconic landmark. It could be a tower. It could be that there's some kind of a tree that's out in the middle of a field. It could be a hilltop or a mountaintop that's nearby. And the trick to this type of a photo, which can get you as a photographer some recognition, is that you get a great shot of the moon rising, and it's not a composite, like one exposure here, which you can do, uh, within the next three days. So get a shot of, of the moon rising behind your local landmark and then as quick as you can get it get the photo out onto social media um, potentially and I've had success with this before is to contact your local television weather uh, email address and send the photo in to say, hey, here's the photo I just got of the supermoon rising behind the ABC iconic landmark of our location. And chances are you can get your image put onto uh, the news or uh, shared with local newspaper websites. So like push it out because it will have real relevance if you get that photo out to the conventional media at the time of the supermoon and connected to a local landmark they'll love it and it will get you a little more recognition as a photographer in in the place where you live. So that's my encouragement to you. Go out and get a super moon shot. This is the opportunity to get it because when the moon rises as a full moon, it it rises at essentially the same time that the sun is setting. So you'll have that balance of light where the moon will be visible, but there's still a little bit of light in the sky, ambient light, so you can capture everything in one iconic and epic shot. So if this is the type of thing you love to do and you want to know more about how to be in the right place at the right time, well, this is what I get into in depth inside my Photography Transformation Masterclass. The entire first module is just stuff like this where I show you how you can be in the right place at the right time to get these kind of opportunities and to capture the perfect light. I actually teach a full four-step system and when you follow all four steps, you're going to be able to take magazine quality photos that you're going to be proud of. You're going to want to print them, put, put them on your wall. So if this is something you're interested in knowing more about, I've got a free web class that tells you all about it. Just click on the link below. You can take the free web class and uh, I'll teach you about the four step system and how you can use it to create award winning photos. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening and go out there tonight and get an awesome photo of the supermoon.